Right, hello guys, welcome back to our channel. Um, about a year ago, we bought our Adria Twin and we did a review on it when we first bought it. And I said I'll do another review in six months, um, but it's been nearly a year now. We thought we'd get it for the winter and then we do the review and what we think of the van now after having it for a year. So I've got the camera, and we walk around and I'll show you what, what, what parts of the van we've got and what we've done to it. Right, so we have the 140 brake horsepower engine on this one and the manual gearbox. Most people on some of the Facebook groups or social groups are going for the 180 brake horsepower. Just to mention it all, and I'll put it across here on the screen, that there is a, an Adria Facebook group which is well worth joining if you're thinking of getting one of these vans to get some ideas of what people have done modification wise. One of the good things Adria did was putting that sun window in the top there which makes it much more light inside. Driving ability is absolutely brilliant on this van. We have no problems getting up mountains. We've been all around the islands, around the cliff tops and stuff, and the motorways have been fine. Some people have upgraded the wheels, but you're saying the Facebook groups to the more terrain wheels, which we will probably get in the future. Um, at the moment, we're gonna look at air suspension probably in the back first, and then maybe the wheels. On this one, which we have is the 640 SGX. We have a diesel heater and everything on this one. Um, and a different bed layout to the 640 SLB. And they also do a 600 version as well, which is a shorter wheelbase to the one you're looking at at the moment. On the rear, we've put the bike rack on ourselves. You can get your dealer to do this, but they don't come with, usually with the bike rack. This is the full bike rack, um, which is really easy to fit. I did do a vlog on fitting it, and it's well worth it. But it only takes lightweight bikes. We've got two normal mountain bikes in there. If you're going for e-bikes or electric bikes, you probably will want to get a um, tow bar fitted and put it on that, because all the weight on these bikes is on that door. So that's one thing to consider. They all come usually, like most models nowadays, um, with a full pull-out awning, which we did a little vlog on. Standard awning like any others. And on the roof, you can't see it at the moment. I'll show you a different video, but there's a full bars, roof bars on there so you can attach things onto that if you want. Full sliding door, you can get the electric door, door closers on these so it slowly closes it and locks it closed, which if I could knew about the feature at the time, I probably would have got fitted because it cuts out noise of the slamming of the doors, um, which is a bit annoying. Um, and other than that, you've got a fly screen on the side door here. You don't have in the back. Now, one of the things with a fly screen, if you buy one of these vans, is this little clip down here breaks and comes off there is a modification for a metal part on here which we've got we haven't fitted yet but if you buy them on these vans make sure you check that that's got the metal clip not this plastic clip on it because that does break off every single time you pull this a little bit too much so that's basically the outside of the van i'll show you on the roof which we've fitted 300 watts of solar on um, to give it another modification that we've done Right, so the front cab is pretty much standard to any other Fiat um, van. We have cruise control on ours, even though we're manual, which we've not really used much because in the UK, we've not had much chance of getting aboard much, but in the UK, cruise control is pretty used to this because most of the roads are like car parks. Um, like I said earlier, we've got the six-speed manual box. I prefer manual to automatic myself. It's everyone's personal choice, really. Um, down the front dash we have the sat nav what i've said about um it's okay for sat nav media wise we you have a radio you have dab on here and you can also connect your phone to it and play podcasts and music through your phone aircon is a basic aircon on this one our model you can get an upgrade and get climate control which we had on our old boxer down here we have the i believe this bit here is for heating up the mirrors um because there's no rear window is what we've been told um locking the doors internally and you have the traction control uh, and you've also got a hill descent which we've never used really the top part up here pulls up i'll try and do this now so that just pulls up like that there's a lever on the side that pulls out and then you can put your mobile phone in here or tablet um that's a really nice feature we use that a lot because we have, like I say, we put our phones on here to do our um, traveling. You've got quite big pockets on the side, like most vans we've had, 
and the little compartment up here. Now, if you've never had a van before, we had this in our last one. Um, people don't realise that this van, this box up here, is connected to your heating system or your cooling system, the ventilation system. So if you've got it on heat, it's going to get hot in here. And if you've got it in cold, it's going to get cold. Now that's quite handy sometimes, especially in the, um, when we go to Spain. We're putting bottles of water in here, and um, put the aircon on, and it chills them down nice and cold. So that's really nice. Side um, blinds as well are here. So they just go up and magnetically connect. You do need to be careful if you've got them when you open the doors. If you have them up and you open the doors on a windy day, the wind does catch them and pulls them off the door. Um, and you've also got these lines that go across both sides to cover the front windscreen. So, all right, so when you come inside the cabin compartment, you can see how they cut out the top area around here, which is um, different to some vans. New, a lot of the newer vans are getting this now, and they put in what's called their um, sun, I think it's their sun window or so um which is really good feature it does it does mean now that you can now stand up in this area quite nice which is a, a really good feature because sometimes they put a little tiny shelf here um to put all your stuff on but it means you're losing the headroom so this is this is quite a nice little feature they've added onto it so that does have a blind as well um all windows have got blinds and they've all got the pull down netted part as well for keeping your nets out the only one that hasn't got that out of the whole system is your back doors you got and back doors you have to fit your own um, mosquito net so on the door windows uh, the switches over the side here as you come in you've got a little switch here for doing your step that's also automatic when you turn your ignition on closes the step you've got a light switch here that turns all the lights on around the main co compartment your LED lighting and if you hold that switch in, it'll dim the lights up and down. And you've also got a switch here, which does your outside light um, on the door for your awning area. Down the bottom, move my shoes that way, you've got another light down here, which is a step light, which is standard for Fiat vans. There's one here and there's one in the rear. Now for me, I pulled these out, you can easily pull them out, and you can take the plug off them, disconnect them. Some people are fitting them with LED lights, uh, yeah, LEDs, because what can happen easily, you can just knock these so easily, especially in the back door one, and they can stay on and drain the battery on your starter battery, because I believe they're off your starter battery. And whilst I'm down here, I'll show you this later, this compartment here, which we take it out, it's got two fuses in here. One of the fuses in here is for your leisure battery, charging up your leisure battery, and the other fuse is for your fridge. Um, so both cabin seats turn around, as you'd expect in these sort of vans. These are extremely comfortable seats. We, I was a bit dubious about here. We've come from a six berth van, which had um, the normal, um, normal home sort of bench seats that we used to sit on, or you'd lay in the back bed. And I was dubious about sitting on these sort of seats. If you've been driving all day, you turn up and then you suddenly you're gonna be sitting on these as well in the evening. But these are really, really good. You can put them in all positions, wind them back and forth like you do any other van and the armrests um, and so yeah they're very, really really good the only thing to take into account to be careful of is that they are white so we still haven't got our seat covers but it's probably quite um, a big thing to put seat covers on because they can get well if you get them stained you're not going to clean them easily some of the other lights you've got around the van as well is these little touch lights you should just touch the turn on and off but most of the lights around the van are quite bright enough. Control panel up the top here. The slight modification that I've done on this one is putting one this in. This is a battery shunt monitor. Bit cheaper than the Victron monitor. I've done a vlog on fitting this. Um, so these are currently about £30 to fit this one. And you can see it flashing there and then thinks it's the solar's kicking in um, and it's charging up. And this gives me how much current's going into it or out of it. Um, it also gives me percentage of the battery and it's how many voltage of the battery. So that's a little modification that I've put in. And there's a, like I said, there's a vlog on how I did that. And what used to be here is the heater control for your diesel heater, which has been replaced and put down the back. And I'll show you that in a minute. The other thing you've got up here is your well um, hot water heater. So you've got two switches on in here. Down at the bottom would turn the gas on and you'd heat up the hot water. Um, there's no temperature control, it just heats it up. 
switching it to the top way where it says that frost symbol we just put the heat the hot water into frost mode so that if it gets too cold outside it'll kick in just stop it freezing now there is on some of the vans especially the newer vans that you get a frost dump valve which i'll show you where that is later but luckily we haven't got it because a lot of people had problems on that the main control panel you've got a push button and a rotary switch on it and um, pushing the button turns everything on and off turn it to the right it shows you how much water you got in the tank and you can then push it to turn your hot water on and off your uh, water pump that is and then push, turn it again and it tells you how much you got in your waste go back to the left and we have the power how much voltage you got in your leisure battery obviously i've got this so i don't need that and turn it over further and it'll tell you how much voltage you got in your starter battery um so it's quite a handy little panel for that reason other things up here is because we've got the SGX, we've got the bed that goes up and down. We have controls for the bed to bring it up and down. Um, we've also got the controls at the back of the van that does the same thing. And this little switch up here is a reset. If you push the bed to go up, you've either got too much weight on it or you push it to the ceiling and you've got um, duvets and cushion on it and put too much stress on the motors, it will click and chip this out. So you have to push that button there and reset it. And the little black thing here is your temperature control for the cabin. It takes the temperature and sends it down to the Webasto diesel heater so it can work out what temperature the room's supposed to be at. And that's basically it for the controls within the van. Right, so all the um, Adria Twin vans, the SGX, the SLB, and I believe the 600s, have all, all got these top cupboards. There's not much difference between the 600 and, um, and all the different models of the front cab areas I'm showing you. So they've got these push cupboards, cupboards at the top, which are quite nice sized cupboards. Not too big, so they're taking up too much headroom, which is quite good. They've all got these little catches in here for the push part. Now, a lot of people had problems with these, either not connecting properly, or some of, some people have broken them. Again, I don't know how to adjust these, um, because I've never had any problem with mine. But if you do join the Facebook group, which I highly recommend, you can um, post it on there if you have problems with these cupboards, and yet someone on there has adjusted them, and they will show you how it's done. Um, this is our second cupboard which is full of all Loessa sweets and stuff. Not just mine. So um, that's why it's always full. Um, over this side, we have another little cupboard, which is quite a nice little one by the door, which we use for all our electronics, cameras, leads and chargers, and we put our hats and scarves in there. So you, they're all ready for when you're going out, especially in the UK. And on the roof, we have a roof sunlight, which does open by this windy arm and closes now these again another one that um, if you're buying the vans I don't know whether this is coming out of the sun coming through but if you're buying the vans make sure you check this no, two reasons one because our dealer left ours open and although it's closed down like this and um, when we was driving along it was blowing right up um, the other one is people have got their vans and they've tried to close them and it click 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 and it's broken internally and that becomes a warranty claim so if you're picking your van up make sure you test this and make sure it closes properly before you drive off the deer's far call um, it does come with a net for the mozzies and obviously the blinds like you would go for every single van out there right so the lounge area as you can see Loretta sitting there lounging around uh, <laughs> we have a nice um, table which can easily seat four people as you can see all our products that we've just got from being in Delft where we are at the moment so this table can be used in three different ways and I'll set it up differently to show you the different ways it can be set up if you want to bring the bit out so you can, there's a piece that you can spin out so the better showing you um, and this is ideal if you're sitting in the driver's seat which is where I usually sit um, which is really good um, and comfortable for e eating because you can put, bring the seat right forward to this area. So that's a nice little add-on to this. Pulled it out even further. Up there if you're making dinner, sure. So it does work quite nice because you have got another table here. I'll just flip it up. So for the kitchen area, you can have quite a bit of workspace then for when you're doing some cooking in the kitchen. And we added this, which is connected directly to the battery by a fuse. If I turn it on. We have a USB and a cigarette outlet for charging up our laptops and phones. Now there is a charge point up here in the corner and there's a 240 volt socket up here as well 
and TV air will outlet. But it is quite a bit draping that all the way down to the table and the leads out. out. So I'll show you the table set up in a lower position as well. So, right, so the table can be locked in at a lower position, which is a bit weird for some people to thinking. But we've used, I've used this where I've sat over here, put some cushions across here, spun that chair around, and then I can lay here. Um, and go to sleep while the waiter's driving. Um, this is mainly quite good when I've come off night shifts. So I do 12 hour nights and we want to get away straight away. So at six in the morning, I can set this up as a mini, little, little mini bed. Um, I can still sit here legally with my seatbelt on and have a little snooze and then wake up when we're on site. All right, so while the table's out, just show you the little compartment under the table. So this is where Adria put the jack that used to be underneath the passenger seat. So they're bolted it into here and we use it for putting in bits and pieces for emergencies because we don't get in there often um, so when we break down it's quite a good place in future I'm going to probably be moving a lot of this um, because I'm hoping to get a um, an inverter and putting one of them in here and then I can run a microwave and kettle off it so that's the future I've got to find somewhere else for all this here. and this is also a good place for storing contraband That's the cheese stored away. <laughs> right, so whilst the table's out, I'll show you some of the electric side of the van. So the passenger side is where we have the battery, which when you buy these vans, you'll get an AGM battery. I believe it's 110 amp hours AGM. And on the right hand side, driver side here, you'll have behind all this electronics is the EBL control system. Now on your, most new Ragers now, they will have a, a B2B on the passenger side fitted. Most of them are coming with them now. So if you decide to upgrade to lithium, you can go ahead with that without them to worry about a B2B because it's already installed. I've decided to fit my own. I've got the Orion Smart Victron B2B there, um, which is all wired up directly to the start of battery, bypassing the EBL. If you look at my old, some of my vlogs, you'll see how I've installed all that. And on this side, normally if you're buying a van, you'd have an NDS Solar controller which is the other side um, the foot weld of the passenger driver's seat um, I've took, taken that out and fitted the Victron MPPT controller to because I've got more solar on the roof and the NDS that comes with the van can't take that much solar unless you run separate cables so again you can check that out on my vlogs other vlogs or join the twin Facebook group and ask some questions on there because a lot of people have done this sort of stuff now right so the Passenger seat um, has a little compartment underneath it. This is where we keep all our bits and pieces. Like we've got the water hose in there. Um, this is for the Ad Blue because when you fill up the Ad Blue, it's very hard to get the stuff in the van because of the way they've set up the pipe. So it's quite handy to have a funnel or something. Um, I've also got my charger. This is my Victron charger. Um, that'll charge up my lithium if I ever need it, if I'm desperate, which we never use, or the battery because I've removed the solar. We haven't got a permanent charge on the starter battery. Um, which is something I'm going to probably fit permanently soon. Um, and then underneath this part, we have the all the fuses there. These are the MCBs and stuff for your 240 volts if you have a dim chip. And down the bottom there, you see that little yellow piece there? That's a pressure relief valve for the hot water system. Now that's something that people have had problems with. We had it as well, where we turn the hot water on, the pressure builds up and it dumps all the water, including all your fresh water. Um, I've managed to put a bit of blue tack on mine at the moment, which is down here. I don't even see it, and it's to hold that valve closed a bit more. Some people had these replaced by Adria under warranty as well. Um, we haven't used the hot water that much to work out whether really it's a problem or not. Um, so there's a little valve down here. Um, this is supposed to circulate the heat around your water system, cold water system, when you're in freezing cold temperatures to stop it freezing. The water system pipes so if you're in a cold environment um you operate that and then when you turn your hot heating on it blow around to your cold water pipes right for the tv we've got a lg 24 inch tv so this is a standard tv you can get from argos it does stick out a little bit on the side as you can see put my hand there but it doesn't cause us any issues really um i've done a conversion on this so that it runs on 12 volts so you can see some of my vlogs in here i put a dc dc um 12 volts 19 volts in, uh, converter 
in the back of this panel, which is the reason why I've got a fuse and a switch up there, switch that on and off. And in that controls this TV, so it runs on 12 volts. Again, I've done a vlog on that, so if anyone wants to follow that, it's easy to do. Um, it takes a few minutes, and we've been running this a year now and had no issues. The reason why we went for that is a lot cheaper than the Avtech, and the apps on the LG TV are much better. So we have all the apps, Netflix, all the way through to Prime, Sky, um, and BBC, and all the demands. Mainly we use all the on-demand apps. For sound, we use the JBL soundbar. Some people get the Abtec soundbars. Um, they're all pretty good, really. This one will just charge off the van when we're driving. We just plug in a USB charger to charge it up, and it holds the battery charge very, very well, quite long, and they're good sound quality. So one of the good things about this TV um, bracket, it does spin completely around 180 degrees, so you can watch TV in bed. And the 24 inch is the maximum you can go to that it fits both between both cupboards and you can see it quite well in your bedroom area so anything over 24 inch and you won't be able to spin that around um, right so the kitchen area down the bottom here we have two compartments where we can put some bags and stuff in some people put their bins here so this is a good place to put your rubbish bin as i said earlier we have a little flap here that comes up gives you an extra bit of space for doing any chopping and stuff the door panel, you can, don't know if you can see, this is a, um, a material covering that they put on the door. Um, that's not very good. Some people replace that with a plastic film, um, which we'll probably end up doing, because your boots and that catch on it get muddy. You can see we've got to clean ours up again, and it doesn't clean very easily. So the hob, we've got two gas rings, which is perfectly enough for what we do. Um, and it's all built, all built into one unit with the sink. Um, people have had trouble with water if you're in here it splashes onto this area and it gets into these little holes that then the water then drops into your drawers below so that's something to be aware of I've seen some people put a little tiny plastic trim across here to stop that happening and um, we've not had too much of an issue at the moment with that um, other than that it's basic sink isn't it um, pull down lids are quite nice so it gives you extra space and then it looks quite nice as well Cupboards, we've got plenty of cupboards on the van compared to what we expected. So this is our first one. We keep our chopping board in there and I've made up a little tiny compartment area that come out and then give you another compartment below. Some people have done a nice little job on Adria uh, Facebook group where they've pulled a, another um, shelf in here that pulls out and has a knife and fork set in there. It's quite a good little idea. I might end up doing that myself one day. And then the bottom one is where we keep our bits and pieces, food side of things. And the next one further back is where we keep all our saucepans and kettles and stuff. So you've got a gas oven as well. We've used this a couple of times. Not too impressed with it. It does take forever to heat up. We're trying to get away from gas as much as we can now because of the price of gas and it's hard to get hold of in the UK at the moment. So we'll probably be taking this out and putting a microwave in replacement with, of this. Um, not, not because of the electric hookup, but if I get my inverters running, we can run that on the lithium battery I've got. So we get away from gas and electric hookup side of it as well. But other than that, that's a gas and grill. And then there's another little compartment in here, which has got all your valves to shut off your hob and your cooker if you have any problems. And we just keep some washing up bits and pieces in there and that's it really. So another thing I've added is a socket on this side, which we can get to when the door is closed. I'll just close the door. So there's just about enough room for me to get my hand down there to plug things in. Um, so we plug the kettle or the toaster into that. And that's easy widening. You can go underneath the cupboards here, up back of the fridge, and you can spur into the socket that Adria put in up here. So I've done a spur, which is behind the fridge. I took the fridge out to do it. Um, put a junction box in there and spurred in for the socket down there. There is lighting here as well. There's a flick switch here to turn your lights on. All LED lighting. All these lights are two-way switching, so you can switch them on individually, off in the middle, and furthest one will then be controlled by the main switch by the door I showed you earlier, which is then dimmable. Um, another little shelf we put on. This is just for our cups and some um, kitchen roll. Um, cups we've put 
little metal bits on the bottom and there's neo magnets at the underneath so the cups stay in place while we're driving along and then last bit in the kitchen is your top cupboard again we've made little little tiny uh, boxes these are only these boxes we've got um are paper filing boxes that you can get so we just got them cut them down um, and it just keeps everything in place stops things moving around there's a, another long cupboard down here which is normally when you buy the van will be for a wardrobe it's for hanging up the shirts and stuff so we replaced this with this sh shelving unit and got the idea from someone on the yeah, facebook group so this just gives us a lot more storage then for all our kitchen stuff so we've got towels on top um, in here we've got a draining board this is a pull out draining board that pops out um, toaster and kettle and then last one it's got to be the goodie drawer another goodie drawer um, so it's quite a handy little cupboard we picked up from um, Wilco's in the UK but if you're outside the UK look it up on Amazon they sell them all on Amazon right and then the fridge so the fridge is a 12 volt compressor fridge controversial to pick some people whether they like them or not personally I, I think they're great because with, with the gas fridges as soon as you go in Spain they just don't work very well and the compressor fridges can work down to a lot work in a lot hot temp, hotter temperatures the downside of them because they're 12 volt they do take a lot of power on your battery so that's the reason why we end up stalling lithium um, but good size fridge on here I don't know the full capacity of it this is the smaller version they do do a bigger version comes in a freezer compartment and that's it for really for all I can say with a fridge um, I think they're pretty good for running on the battery so it runs directly on a 12 volt battery which also means if you ever go to Spain via the uh, ferry because you leave your boat uh, probably overnight or sometimes two nights you can leave your fridge on um, just controlled up here on the panel it does have a night mode you can just push that button there you got to hold it in and then it goes into night mode which means it's quieter um, take it off night mode for now because it's been day and then it's back to normal we normally switch ours off at night um, so look, look, if we keep the door closed it stays cold in there for the night if you ever need to get this fridge out for two reasons to get them out if you ever need to get this fridge out there's some little pops plastic pieces here you can, two each side take them screws out and the fridge will just pull out and the reasons you might want to take it out there is an inline fuse on the top of the fridge up, up here which you can't get to unless you take the fridge out so if you ever find it's not working it's nothing to do with the ebl and anything else then it's probably the fuse on the top of here might have blown and the other reason if you ever decide to replace the solar panel cables which i've done the, there's a hole in the roof up here just above the fridge um, where you can get to the old um, cables pull them out and run your new cables through and it's very very easy to run new cables then upgrade the, the solar panel cables if you need to right for the rear of the van I'll just show you as with the bed up so this is the XGX uh, model which the bed goes up to the ceiling as you can see giving you the bottom compartment area during the day for storage some people put motorbikes in here or they push bikes in here um, we've made ours into more of a luxury storage area the slb doesn't have this it has a bed that flips to the side so it, it um sort of goes i think like that so it's a little bit different and then it has two single beds both of them you can sleep both way around if you've got all the cushions in there we sleep long ways from front to back um because we haven't got the side cushions in there and if you've got a 600 um age of 600 it doesn't isn't as long so you sleep long ways i hope you're getting that with my finger <laughs> but anyway you sleep different way around um and he doesn't have the back windows as well on a 600 so as you can see we've got two back windows on this one um we've replaced the flooring with a carpet we've used carpet tiles to replace this normally you'll have a metal um corrugated metal i think it's aluminium probably um, on the bottom which is quite nice if you're keeping your motorbikes and bikes in here easy to clean out and bolt down all of them come with these metal tie downs there's four of them one in each corner so that you can tie down your bikes and stuff we've added extra tie downs because we had something else tied in here before um, loads of little cubby holes like them two there and there's three over the back there you can see one of them at the top and we picked up these cushion well these um, box things another good um, tip from someone on the Adria group these are 
made from a cardboard but put material over it so very very lightweight um, but quite strong so you can sit on them and this is where we keep all our clothes um, cameras and bits and pieces so nice little storage box one each keeps everything nice and tidy then so loads of cupboard space down here we've got quite a few two two drawers at the top to pull out we can keep all our drinks and stuff um, food in that one tupperware containers and, and bits and pieces so there's quite a lot of storage down here You've also got another 240 volt socket here where we plug in a convector heater. Um, so as you can see there, it's a convector heater. If we're on an electric hookup, we'd use that during the day and the evenings um, rather than using our diesel. If, we, if they're forcing us to pay for electric hookup, then I'm using it. Um, some places you can get on sites and they charge extra for electric hookup. We won't pay for it. We go non-electric. But a lot of sites nowadays, they're forcing you and saying it's electric hookups. Um, not an option. You have to have it. So we... Might as well use it. And there's another socket down here as well. So you can plug something in there. So this is, this is mostly our storage. Someone's asked us for how much we take storage wise. All we've got really is two, two outdoor uh, chairs down there. We've got a table over there. Um, we've got a collapsible barbecue that goes in a little bag. You see it on probably one of my vlogs. But if, if you want to know, I can put a link to it. Um, and that's what that grill's for, metal grill there. Um, is to go on top of the barbecue if we need to eat that it's ours um, Hoover for this week because we're away for a week and then two gas bottles in the back corner um, and that's it really for this back compartment what I can say we've put, we put some rails along the top they're just bolt, uh, screwed into the wood um, and we use them to hang our towels up our coats and our waterproofs when we've been away out in the rain we come back we can hang them up here we can turn the diesel heater on or put the convector heater on um, put a cover over this front part and it heats up like a little sauna in here and dries everything out quite nicely and talk, and talk about the heaters there's two heat vents down here um, these are for the Webasto diesel heater I've replaced them with these vent things that shut down now I've only just done this so I've not tested it enough to see whether it's it's okay because um, we need to see whether the heater will actually start up properly when you close them off because you are shutting off the airflow through the heater so it's just a trial at the moment but otherwise these cushions are up against that them vents and they get quite hot all right for the diesel heater which i said about a little mod that i put in um a lot of the new vans are coming with this now but this is the digital control heater system for the webasto um so you can control the heater and the ventilation and set up a timer on this um but the best thing about this compared to the old one is that you can set the actual temperature that you want the room to be at and you can also control well, you've got control the temperature there and you can control the amount that the fans are blowing at. Um, I'll just turn it off. If, if you push that button, it goes green. That means the heat is going to start up. Push it again and it goes white. It, it shut the heater down. And then you can turn that onto ventilation. Now, like I say, a lot of the new vans have got these being fitted and they're up the front control panel. If you've got one of the older vans, you'd have a rear stat with a switch to switch it on and off. And they're not as accurate, but they're, they're okay, but they're not as accurate because you're working with just a... A, a, like a thermostatic rear stat switch all right so now the bed's fully down um and as you can see i've got my little stool now to get in and out of the bed it's a bit high it would be nice if adrian could have had it so that you could level the bed you've got two straps at the back you can see up against the window there and there's two straps at the front and they both go up and down um evenly but if they could have put two switches in and two different motors in there possibly could have been a way of being able to level this bed when you're on an unlevel surface without not having to worry about leveling the van up so much um but i'll show you up in the bed area um there's a roof window a lot of people get the either the fan or the aircon unit fitted into this it's supposed to fit in there quite nice and for both i believe the electrical connection wires are in that roof area somewhere and they go down to the passenger seat area there's a spare wire down there to be able to wire the 240 up for that reason both the side windows and back windows, all the open windows, all got fly screens, and they've all got the blackout blinds. Little cubby hole things at the back door, putting bits and pieces, and at the side. Now on our model, you have got on this side, if we don't have that cushioning, normally they'll have a cushioning down here on both sides. We take it, it took it out, and that's a place where you can put your cup of tea or glass of wine when you're sitting there watching telly. Um, the little compartment with the hole in it, I'll show you later, is our water supply area. Both sides have 
electric lights as you can see this side has a USB outlet so you can charge your phone um, the other side doesn't have that for some reason they only put it on one side on this side there's loads of little square cubby hole areas where we put bits and pieces all our rubbish goes in there um, and then at the end there I usually have a cup of tea or something up that end so normally we all have our heads up against the back door here and for that reason we've got these wooden pieces that I put in these are just slotting friction fit and they just prevent your head hitting against these blinds and damaging the blinds not everyone has the problem some people say they don't but if you're sitting there watching telly we've got a nice big cushion Let's set it up we haven't so we have a nice big cushion goes along the back with our pillars so we can just sit up here watching watching telly in the evenings or news in the morning about having to get out of bed and so this is the view from the bedroom area sitting back with the tv turned around laying on the bed now and you can see we've got a good picture of the tv and a good view throughout the whole front of the van one of the other things up here is these little cupboards we've got three each side these are shallow cupboards compared to the SLB just because the bed goes up and down. So they're quite small cupboards. This is just where we usually keep um, underwear and t-shirts and stuff. Because when these cupboards, if you fill these cupboards up with stuff that you want during the day, when the bed's up, you can't get to these cupboards. So, right, so one last thing to mention about these beds on the SGX is that it does rock about a bit. When you're getting in and out during the night, if you have to go to the toilet or something, it does move a little bit, which can wake the other person up. And so we've got, these plastic wedges these are just normal door wedges and all we do is we stick these the bed and the outside edge and we do got four of them one in each corner and it makes it a rock hard solid bed which is quite nice other than that these this bed is very comfortable it's a memory foam uh, mattress and we find that it's quite comfortable we get a good night's sleep in this bed all right so up here like i said this is the switch for bringing the bed up and then we can be Back up to the ceiling again so we've got the bottom compartment in for during the day all right so that only leaves one other thing in the back and that's in here what i said about this is a water container now you can fill this up from outside like any other van um, there's a black rotary thing here which if you turn opens up a valve to dump all your water when you don't need it again um, and then this pipe here is what i said about earlier about the heating um, if you turn that valve on that showed you under the passenger seat it then blows warm air down here to make sure these pipes don't get frozen now if you're on a site like we was on a couple of weeks days ago where we couldn't get a hose connected to the van because of the way they set up the taps you can unscrew this which we do um, take that out and fill directly into here which is quite a handy little thing to uh, tip as well right so that finally leaves the toilet area so cassette toilet like we get on most um, most motorhomes nice little cupboard area shelves there in the back for all your bits and pieces and there's a little cupboard up the top here for more bits and pieces um vent hole in the top of the ceiling i'm going to be installing a 12 volt um fan to that a computer fan at some point um just to run it straight off the 12 volt light up here um, purely because i've got the solar panels going over this this vent now it's still usable but it does block it off a little bit um Another thing they give you is a little pull down piece for hanging your towels up to dry your towels off if you need to. And you close the door, put the heat on, and this can turn into a little sauna area to dry things off exactly the same as what I do at the back. So the door is a sliding door, which when fully open, there's a little tiny thing up here to clip it closed. And if you don't, when you're driving along, I do we do find this door rolls and slams and bangs into the other side the other side they give you a hook um, here we put another hook in here this has just been super glued on not screwed um, just so we can hang your coats up there's not many places to hang coats up otherwise so two lights one for underneath the cupboard light one for the ceiling that I just showed you right so the sink has got a hot and cold tap running tap um, the tap does move and um, the sink doesn't there's a lot of people who have mod some people modded this so the sink rotates around a lot of people complain about this sink it's not great because you can't get down the back to clean around it and um, there's always water around it and um, which isn't good really That's but the feature that adrian did quite a lot of people are doing now is if i grab hold of this spin the whole door around you then have your shower area which we've used once or twice not often because we normally on sites where we've got showers 
um, but that closes off the whole of the toilet area so you don't get any water spraying over your toilet and all your stuff that you've got stored in there so that's pretty much all I can say about the toilet area so there's one other compartment I'm going to show you Alright, so in the floor area, we put carpet tiles in, like I said earlier, and the, the rug I've just pulled up. So this carpet tile, I didn't glue down, all the others are stuck down with uh, double-sided tape. This one's not stuck down, so we can get it up again. And you have another compartment. So if you do put carpet down, you do need to be able to get to this compartment. And under here is the drainage valves, these two valves that you can open up to dump all the water from the hot water um, well, heating system, the hot water system, and from the cold water system as well, anything in the pipes. Turn your, uh, make sure, when you put it into storage, you have to make sure your shower and everything else is switched on. Uh, make sure you drain everything down, because this, this, when it gets cold, these will freeze. And you can see the pipes going through there for the heater, so it heats up this area. Now on your newer vans, I haven't got it, but they do have a frost dump valve in here as well. It's a black box being in the middle here, with a little switch on the side. You'll soon see it. This is where people have a lot of problems with the valves dumping the water when it gets to about, I believe, at five degrees. It doesn't have to get that cold for it to dump all your water. A lot of people are having trouble with that, and I'm glad, really, I haven't got that. Um, not had any frozen pipes either yet. But that's one of the last little cubby hole that I know off around the van. <laughs> right, so a year on, what do we think of the van? So we still love the van, and it's probably the best thing we've done, switching from a big six berth motorhome to the small panel van we've been able to tour more and do more um, holidays which we've enjoyed the traveling and touring than we would ever have done with our sixth berth purely because of the size so some of the cons of it then internally obviously they're smaller the size of this van is a lot smaller so you do have to get used to that we've managed to pack quite a bit in to a small van and we like the SGX because the bed goes up makes it feel much bigger and we've got more space back there but we do find if someone's cooking, you can't go to the toilet because you can't get past them. So one person has to go in the toilet, don't they? So that we, we can get past each other. Oh, one person has to just sit at the table and the other person has to serve them. You know, so that's quite nice. Really. Yeah. One person relaxes, exactly. one person does the work and then the other person does the cleaning up or the washing but up. But it's not too bad, really. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. One thing we did think we would have done more is to open the back doors. You see pictures of people laying in bed with the back doors open. We haven't had a chance to do that yet. Because, because of the, of the weather. weather so far. Our summer holiday last year was in Ireland, so we still didn't really get a chance to do that. But yeah, the bed's very comfortable, but again, it's a bit of a jump to get onto. And if you want to go to the toilet in the night time, it's making sure you're finding the step to get down. You think it would have been nicer if they'd lowered the bed a little bit. The oven, which I mentioned as well, um, if you have an option to put the oven in, I personally wouldn't pay the extra money to have the oven put in. I think they're a waste of money. We'll be taking ours out and selling it on eBay um, and putting a microwave in. So that's a bit of a downer on the con side of it. Yeah, the toilet is um, another thing that um, it's unusual to have such a high toilet, really. Yeah. Um, whether it's to do with the shower and stuff being in there as well, but it's just something you get used to, I suppose. I do really. feel like a Mr. Wimple Loompa all the time around this van because I've got short legs. So wherever I'm sitting, on the bed, on the chairs, or in the toilet, I'm dangling my legs. Um, which is a bit of a funny one. And the bathroom sink is a bit of a disappointment. Um, they could have designed that much better. We've had a lot better sinks in the past. It's just every time you wash your hands, you go to turn the tap off, then you put water everywhere. So it's constantly water everywhere underneath where the sink is. And the 12 volt system and the van, the, um, what they provide you, when you think you're buying a 60 odd thousand pound van now, you think they'd at least give you a lithium battery. They're not that expensive nowadays. And then maybe a little bit more solar than 120, it's not enough really. Not for a 12 volt fridge and the amount of stuff that you want to put on that 12 volt system. So that's a bit of a bad thing. But going away from the cons, I mean, they're all minor things really. So we don't want to sit here moaning about how bad the van is when we said we love it, because we do love it. Um, the size of the vehicle, going back to that, because it's such a small compact vehicle, these are the size of a panel vans that you get for delivery vans. You can get, take these down country lanes. We took them down um, width restriction areas, um, ran um, um, shopping areas for parking up is quite easy to do. Um, even be able to do a three point turn in what I've done in this van on a country lane. It really can throw these vans around a bit. Um, so they're lovely to drive. They're very easy to get in and out of places and it makes it more fun for touring. So we love that part of it. Even if we have to swap drivers sometimes. Yep, look at drives most of the time. I just get out of these type of spots. <sighs> yeah, um, going from a sixth berth, you'd never dream really. We were kind of really dubious thinking whether we'd get everything we wanted in here. 
but it's worked well really you yeah, know we had, an old, we had a, a massive six birth moat at home before so from dan sizing from that people mentioned it on the facebook group whether whether we how do we get on people get on that we, we think it's the best thing we've ever done it's really made our uh, motor home in life much better and much more fun as we've got older the, the other pro is the diesel heater which i mentioned earlier um it's lovely not to rely on gas it heats up really quick it's it works in minus temperatures and it's just brilliant to be able to have a diesel heater rather than relying on a gas heater so that's quite nice as well the fridge is nice um we're looking forward to going abroad and being able to use the fridge because the last fridge we used to have didn't often work abroad so that's quite nice it's a nice height as well it's better than being low down so that you don't have to kind of bend down every time you want something it's just a nice size to be able to get everything really the other um, thing we like about it is the stealthiness of the van when you're looking outside it looks a nice van it doesn't stick out as a motorhome when you're parked up on a nice beachfront or something like that where motorhomes are getting a bad stigma especially in the UK um, and people getting annoyed with them clogging up the place this does sort of um, um, go um, disintegrate into the air or something. Well it's so much less like a motorhome yeah. that people don't even wave at you when you're driving do they? It looks more they like a delivery a van. So. <laughs> yeah so we know we can get places that delivery vans can get as well don't we? And the other thing is the and brightness of it because they've cut out this roof bit at the top of us mm -hmm. and we've got these two windows cut roof lights um, it makes it so much brighter in here this feels so much bigger and so much more space in here we've looked at other panel vans which haven't had this and they haven't got the raised bed they have the bench seats at the back and you wonder where do you put your bed in and, and, and they're much mm. more darker and everything else. So this does, Adrian have done a really good job of setting this van up so it feels much bigger than it actually is. So you don't feel like you're in a cramped little van. No. So all in all, um, we still love the van. I mean, we won't get rid of it. We'll probably keep this for quite a few years because we've, we've really enjoyed touring in it. And we've not even been able to get aboard yet because of COVID. <laughs> we've only done Ireland, um, most of the UK, Scotland, and we're currently in Netherlands at the moment. Um, hopefully to get into Spain this summer yeah, but we've only had about a year and Covid's really stopped all that so including we've been away in some really rubbish weather um, we've still loved the van which is pretty good going really um, so I hope you enjoyed this I know it's a long in-depth review please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and we'll try and add some more bits for our vlog and anyone's got any comments put it below I'll try and answer anything about the van if you want to know anything and if I don't know it join the Facebook group there's a brilliant Adria Twin Facebook group and there's loads of people on there that know quite a bit about this, these vans from the mechanical engineering side, electrical or even just little mods that people have done on it. So it's well worth joining that group because there are faults on the vans and people have shown you how to fix them. So if you get one, get one of these vans, if you haven't got it yet or you're about to get one, join the Facebook group. It's well worth it.